Hello, Groveport Madison High School. This is Amy Moran coming to you again, your school counselor. This time we're gathered here together to talk about a program called Signs of Suicide. We know that suicide is something that we deal with in today's society and that it's something that we don't might not know a lot about. So what we're gonna be doing today is you're gonna watch this video. We're gonna talk about the signs of when you or a friend or a family member might be feeling sad or having thoughts of self-harm and then what to do in those scenarios. So we're gonna learn about red flags, what you see, who to tell and what to do. So let's get started. Part of today, we're gonna to watch some video clips we're going to talk a little bit about it. And at the end of all of this, we are going to ask you to fill out two forms. One is a scale of how you're feeling today. And another one is, is there anyone in your life that you're concerned about after we go through all of these signs? While we're talking about suicide and we're going through this presentation, we know it can be hard. All of your counselors are here today. And if there is something that makes you feel uncomfortable or you are like, oh, this is too close or I'm feeling sad, please seek one of us out and get some help. We're, we're here to help. you. Guys. So this year we're going to be doing a turn and talk after each clip. In this presentation, we have a total of three clips. We'll watch the clip and then you will turn and talk to the small group that you're sitting with and the adult that is in charge of your group. And then we'll go back to me talking to y'all from up here. So we're talking about how common this is. So depression and suicide among U.S. high school students, an average classroom is 30 students. That's the same in Groveport, about 30 students. 12 or 37% report they felt sad or hopeless for two or more weeks and that they had stopped doing their usual activity. 12 and 30. So if you're, you're sitting in a math class and there's 30 kids and you're looking around, 12 on average are feeling sad or hopeless. Six have seriously considered attempting suicide. Five of those, 16% have made a suicide plan. And three of them have probably attempted suicide. All right, let's talk about warning signs. These are clues that someone may be thinking about suicide or self-harm. Anger or sadness. Anger is a secondary emotion. If you are feeling anger, it's a cover for something else. It can be powerlessness. It can be embarrassment. It could be sadness. It can be frustration. So if someone's particularly angry, what's that primary emotion? What's that first emotion they're masking with anger? Sometimes it could be sadness. Big changes in the behavior when we see our friends withdrawing or dropping things that they once loved. If you've noticed that you used to really love a certain sport or a musical instrument and all of a sudden you're just not that into it, starting to talk about suicide, talk about just not being here. What would things be like if I were gone? Would people... Would people finally appreciate me if I wasn't here anymore? That type of thinking. All right, let's make a clear distinction on the difference between sadness and depression. Sadness is a common part of life. You can still go about your daily life. You are still functioning, um, temporarily feeling. It will go away on its own. Sadness is normal. We're sad when our dog dies or our goldfish dies. We're sad when we have a relative that dies or goes away. Um, if a friend is mad at us or we get broken up with, those are all things that make us sad. Depression is a whole nother level. This is when it lasts for two weeks or longer. And maybe you might know what started it, but you don't know why you still feel this way. There's not really a reason. Um, it is a health condition that affects the mind and body and you can get treatment for it. So depression is when you have a chemical imbalance in your brain. Your brain is like a pharmacy and it releases chemicals, things like cortisol, if you're stressed, 
adrenaline um, if you're excited, endorphins if you've been working out, serotonin if you're feeling loved and appreciated, all these different chemicals. And if you have a lack of serotonin going through your brain, that could be depression. It's not that there's anything wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with your friends or family members. It's just a condition. It's just like if you get the flu, you have germs in your body. If you get cancer, you have germs in your body. If you have de- have some, if you have depression, you don't have enough serotonin in your body. And there's treatment for it. So here's some signs of depression. We're looking at these things happening two weeks or more in several areas. So if we just have some behaviors for two or more weeks, it might not be depression. But if we're having some behaviors, maybe we're acting angry a whole bunch, and we're also having feelings of sadness, two things for two or more weeks, that could be a sign of depression. Physical symptoms, maybe you are hurting yourself, maybe you are feeling sad, or physical symptoms, maybe you are feeling tired a lot, you want to sleep a lot, You go home and you sleep and then you're up and then you sleep and you're just kind of lethargic. Thoughts. Thoughts could be, I'm not worthy. I'm worthless. People don't like me. I shouldn't be here. And then maybe even formulating a plan. So here they break it down. So physical symptoms. We're sick and run down. Muscle pain, weight loss, poor appetite. We're tired. Thoughts. Here are some examples of things that maybe we're thinking or our friends are thinking, or maybe they've said it out loud. Maybe they've posted it on social media. These are some red flags. Feelings. If we're constantly overwhelmed, unhappy, irritable, frustrated, indecisive, and and these are going on for several weeks. Behaviors. Withdrawn from others. You're not getting things done. You stop doing your enjoyable activities maybe even an increase in alcohol consumption or drugs. This is a big one. Being a good friend means not keeping the secret. And while it's really hard in the moment to do something when your friend is asking you not to, or your friend is saying, don't tell, don't tell, it would be way worse to not tell and then to not have that friend come back to school the following day because they did, they committed suicide. It's always best to tell somebody and risk them being mad at you. Typically, in the end, I've been doing this a long time, that friend comes around and they end up thanking that other friend for saying something and helping them get the help that they might have not been able to get for themselves. All right, let's talk about self-injury. This is when you're hurting your body on purpose. It's not done with an intention to die. If you are have if you are participating in self-injury, you know somebody who is, it does require help from a trained professional in order to find a different way to cope. There are a ton of different ways to cope that are healthy that can help you feel better. If you do know somebody or you see somebody who have engaged in self-harm, act, acknowledge, care, and then tell. Here are some triggering events for suicide. Um, What would take someone from thinking about it to actually acting on it? So if you're noticing that they are having some of these red flags with their behavior, their thoughts, their feelings, their actions, um, a single event does not cause somebody to attempt suicide, but a a triggering event could be that final straw, that last straw that leads them into the act. It could be relationship issues, bullying, rejection, a perceived failure, sudden death of a loved one or a suicide of a friend or relative, family stressors like divorce, jail, deployment, financial issues. Any of these things could be that last straw to send them over the edge. So if you're worried, tell a trusted adult before one of these events happens. Social media can be a good place to see warning signs. 
um, social media posts that say things like there's no point anymore. I want the pain to stop. I don't want to try anymore. Those are all cries for help. A friend who used to post a lot and suddenly they're not posting at all. Or you notice people are posting mean things about your friend and maybe there's some sort of online bullying happening and they're the target. That could be a red flag as well. We need to tell an adult. Social media is a really good place for us to notice any red flags in friends because it is easier to post something on social media as opposed to tell somebody in person. So if someone wants help and they're going to put something out there like, hey, this is how I'm feeling. I would like some help. Putting it on social media is a little bit easier. Um, but some people that are struggling only share what looks good in their lives. And that social media persona of um, I'm, my life is all great and we don't post the bad stuff. We just post the good stuff. Um, trust your instincts. If you just have a feeling that something's changed or you're worried about somebody, it's better to tell and for there not to be an issue than the other way around. There are a lot of good ways we could use social media, write positive things, post compliments, put comments on there, um, share your goals and successes. Be careful with who you follow. Follow inspiring people, inspiring accounts. Connect with your causes, anything that you're passionate about, topics that interest you, and then connect to support groups and find resources. So a coping skill is something that helps you deal with how you're feeling, especially if it's an unpleasant feeling. Um, and there's healthy and there's unhealthy ways to cope. So an unhealthy way to cope, for example, would be to self-harm or cut yourself. Healthy ways are to exercise, write down things you're grateful for, talking to family, friends, teachers, putting on some music. We got to be careful with music. So if we're feeling sad and all we play is sad music, we're always we're just going to continue to feel sad. You want to build a playlist where maybe you start out with music that's sad. Meet yourself where you are. That's how I'm feeling. I'm going to start sad. But then slowly build the playlist to peace or happiness or feel good music. Where do you want to be? And let the journey of the music bring you from sad to peaceful or sad to happy. All right, let's review. Being a good friend means not keeping a secret. If you're worried about yourself or a friend, act. Help is always available and it's available in many different ways. All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to be passing out to all of you two pieces of paper. One is a full length piece of paper, it's called the BSAD. And you're going to fill that out honestly, make sure you put your name on it and you will collect it before you leave the auditorium today. And then the other one is just a little half sheet of paper. And it's just, if you're worried about yourself or a friend and you just think that you should tell somebody, it's very, yeah, it's very simple.